Yo, friends, Raj here, aka the Wisco Horn Dog, back one more time at least. Maybe, well, probably gonna be a few more times on another Saga Thursday. Today we are looking at part two of our Yams Vikings Battleboard review. So we took a look at some of the abilities previously. We're gonna round out that board and then we're gonna give our overall thoughts on the Yams Vikings in general. And that's it. We can't wait. Let's get to it. So let's jump over to that last column and see what we can column do. Column of tears. So this, just some <laughs> tears. The column of Yams, Yamsborg. This is an orders reaction. It can use an uncommon or a rare. Discard the die. Activate for a movement a number of enemy units equal to your wrath level. These units are always considered to move in uneven ground and may not engage in melee with this movement. So just from reading that, I don't fully understand what's going on here. Okay. So, so Yamsburg um, is uh, really powerful. I mean, all these things in this column are ridiculously powerful. Um, this one, so um, it's... You know, it's then it's an activation for movement, and it's their first one of the turn. So if you use this um, and you make units on your opponent's side move, A, they've already activated for a movement, so they cannot rest. They will not be able to rest for their first thing. Uh, they've also activated okay. once for a movement, so if they activate again, every move from that point forward is giving them a fatigue. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can do it in different directions. It's, they count as being in, in uneven ground, so they're typically moving either short or, um, or uh, medium if they're a cav unit. Uh, and mm -hmm. you can basically pull your opponent's army apart. So um, you can have half of their units. If he's kind of setting up in a block, you can have half of his units go four to six inches backwards, and half of his units okay. go four to six inches forward. So you, your you're controlling yeah, these units? Yeah, you control them as the Yams oh, player. Oh, shit. So not only does it okay, mess that's... with them in terms of the, the when they actually end up activating because of their, because of you know, counting as the first movement, but you control it, so you decide where they're going. <laughs> so like, Or if you need to move them off objectives, you can move all of his units off objectives, like in a sacred ground scenario, and then he's got to spend a bunch uh, of dice and generate a bunch of fatigues to get him back on. Okay, so you're... Yeah, okay. That makes sense. You're running the show when you activate Yomsburg. Yep. Oh. Really powerful. And it drops your wrath by two, which is a lot, but it's for a good reason, because that's... Oof. Okay. Well, let's see what else we can do with the wrath here. Next one's Home Gang. It uses any one of the dice. It's a melee ability. Game a number of dice equal to twice your wrath level. These dice may be attack or defense dice or a mix of both. So this is the one that was popped on me yeah. in my, my tournament game where he's like, okay, I gotta, I'm got i going to burn an uncommon or a common dice for uh, 12 yep. attacks. Yeah. <laughs> that... <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't happen, but it happened. Um, but lose, okay, only one wrath level. Yes. Okay, do you use this? Um, Seems this, good. I mean, it's not as overpowering as five and six. Yep, it's yeah. not as overpowering as some of these other ones, but it only decreases your wrath by one. Um, and it's to me, it's a much better play when you kind of have a middling level of of um, your wrath, so like a three or a four, because the ability to get either six or eight dice and mixing them between attack or defense um, and then only dropping down a little bit so you can kind of keep your level at a medium at a medium range still. Um, that's really powerful. It swings entire combats for you, um, especially if you're rolling like, you know, you roll some double-handed axe die, dude, some Dane axes, where you're going to be hitting really well and you're going to be also be taking a lot of damage because you're lower armor. That The ability to say, all right, I'm going to, add a bunch of defense dice in and a couple of attack dice. I'm going to murder you and I'm probably going to save most of my shit. Um, ugh. Yeah, that gets gross. Nice. nice. That's juicy. I like it that. I'm liking it. Yeah, all for a common. Good yep. deal. Moving on to the Hammer of Thor. Oh, this ability. Another melee. This ability. Uh, <laughs> uncommon or rare. Discard the die. I inflict X automatic hits or cancel the first x hit suffered by your unit uh after 
What? After rolling defense dies? Yes. That's bananas. X being a wrath level. So it could be six automatic hits or <laughs> cancel six Yes. Hits. Yes. <laughs> so you thought the home gang like defense option was pretty good. Yep. Um, the hammer of Thor defense option um, for <laughs> one more. And it's just still decrease your wrath by one yes. still. If, if you're oh going to choose between the two of them, you do hammer of Thor. Because automatic yeah. hits or automatic cancellation, both are way better. I mean, think about Hammer of Thor when you're charging your opponent's Warlord or a unit of Hearthguard. You charge a unit of 10 Hearthguard and you say, all right, I'm going to automatically hit you six times along with the, the actual attack dice that I roll. Um, or I've already boosted my attack dice with Danax dudes. I'm going to not only boost some defense with maybe Home Gong or something like that um, or attack mm-hmm. pool, but then I'm also going to um, I'm also going to cancel the you know five of five or six of my my hits that got through on me after I've already rolled defense dice um, to where I barely oh, take any casualties gosh. and I can wipe you. So Hammer of wow. Thor is That's nice. unbelievable. That's good. That's nice. You can, yeah. And, you want to get risky with your your yep. warlord again, Raj? Yeah, this is a yep. good ace in the hole on the back end. Ooh, damn. That, that is good. Do not let the wrath get up. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, Dance of Steel. Next one down. This uses any of the dice. It's a orders or a orders reaction. Designate a number of different units equal to your wrath level. The armor of these units is increased by one until the <laughs> end of your turn. Yep. Uh, decrease your wrath by one. Yeah, that... Fuck, fuck that's good, too. So... It's good, For man. example, <laughs> that's where you know you said your opponent at Adepticon had put all of his stuff on Pagan Fury, um, going for activations. This is where one of those uh, situations where you always put something on the far right board if you're stacking a bunch of abilities that can be canceled. Um, because if you were to say cancel all of my Pagan Furies in my turn, and then you come and attack me, and I have Dance of Steel up, for example, I can say, all right, now I have six Wrath, six of my units have plus one armor. So mm, let's do this. Yeah. You know, like it, it, it kind of keeps you, it kind of keeps you from cheating in those kind of middle rounds when you want to go, when you want to cancel a bunch of abilities. Dance of Steel is great because it affects pretty much the whole army if they have enough wrath to do it. Whereas, you know, Home Gong or Hammer yeah. Thor, it's going to yeah. murder one unit. But at the end of the day, it's not affecting all of the units. That's only one combat. Whereas Dance of Steel, it is the whole turn and it is all the units, you know, or as many units as you have mm-hmm. wrath. So, um, I mean, yeah. just can be a really good thing to kind of keep your opponent honest. That's that's good. That's badass. That that is nice. Feasibly, I mean, depending on your wrath levels, I mean, that's something you could use almost every turn. Yes, uh, and it only costs depending depending what's going on. It costs yeah. a common, so you can cost a common. You can put that defensively as like a you know, if you want to cancel some stuff, get ready for a Dance of Steel next turn. Um, and it costs you an uncommon to do it basically every turn. Mm-hmm. So that's nothing. Ooh. You're running lots of hearth guard. Yep. Going five to sixes. Ooh. Or you run a bunch of dude with Dane axes and the you get the benefit of Dane axes and you don't have the defensive issues that go along with them at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you could stack that with Pagan Faith yep. or uh, Pagan yep. Armor. Damn, that's nice. All right, last one oh, the, here. The granddaddy. We we are legend. Say so this one isn't even. So it doesn't look like they have a double rare. They do. It's an uncommon and a yep. rare. We are legends. Auto reaction. Uh, discard these dice. The first X activations made this turn by the enemy warband are canceled. X being your current wrath level. Yep. Decreasing your wrath level by two. Okay, that. Is bananas. <laughs> that is spend two dice to cancel three or four or five of their dice. It yep. seems like. Um, yep. That's cool. Do you do you use that a no. lot? I kind of feel like with these these other ones, like just fight me, dude. Yep. <laughs> like just stack up the other ones and then fight. Like, like let's do it. Like you can't win. <laughs> like once you're you don't. Max out on the other. You don't ones. use it very often. I mean, we'll talk about it in just a sec. Why it's actually really, really hard to get wrath. Um, 
but like um, you don't use it very often um, because of the lack of wrath. It's also two dice <laughs> as opposed to most of these things being one dice to activate. It drops your wrath by two, so that starts getting pretty painful. Um, and it's to me, it's less effective when you're at like three or four wrath. Um, you know, stopping the first three or four activations, it's good, but it's not overwhelming. Your opponent can still stack enough dice to do what they want to do, um, more or mm-hmm. less, just maybe not as buffed. Um, whereas it's when you have six wrath, like if somebody lets, if somebody stupidly lets you have six wrath before an important turn, the ability to say, okay, um, I'm going to cancel your first six activations. So you're almost going to be doing nothing. Like even with all of your dice, you're almost doing nothing. And then I'm still going to have four wrath in order to put on some of these other abilities and destroy you. So like I can Yomsburg then so I can, we are legends cancel six of your activations and then I can Yomsburg to move four of your units. That was my question. um, Like within charge range of my dudes and then just pound like we're going all in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. Badass. So that's the board overall. So, I mean, we can get up to six wrath. So, like, how much wrath do you usually get to? Like, what what kind of flows of wrath are you are we seeing? Um, just so people know what to, uh, I guess, expect. Maybe. So typically, um, if you're playing against kind of a newer or like a player that doesn't really play that much. Um, you can get up to three, four wrath relatively easily by like turn two or three. Um, you know, as you start getting into combats and abusing the hell out of your attack pool and some of these um, middle abilities, um, and you know, you can then start using some of your abilities. You can sometimes get up to six on them, but even new players sometimes usually recognize the problem of letting you hit six uh, with some of uh-huh. these abilities. Um, the problem is, if you face anyone that even like remotely kind of knows Yams, has played against them a couple times, kind of knows what they're doing. Um, what they'll do is they will take they will take the middle row and they'll eat it. And it's tough. Like it's, it's painful. No. Okay. And they will eat it until the last turn. Um, like right before you take your last turn, um, um, or uh, sorry, your last turn, whatever that is, whether you're top or bottom of the, the lineup, um, they will basically cancel everything. So, okay. um, you know, all of your activations, all of your abilities, they're going to cancel everything that they can. Give you six wrath to end the game. Um, and um, that can be a little bit tricky. Um, you have to keep something, a couple of them on, a couple dice on or some the of the We Are Legends. We Are Legends of yeah, Yomsburg. Or not even really then. Just you're to... not even worried. Unless you're, We Are Legends, if you're trying to, if you know you're ahead and you're trying to stop his stuff, you do We Are Legends. Otherwise, don't worry about mm-hmm. it. If you're. Not in combat right now. Yomsburg doesn't do anything. You could potentially move guys away from you again if you're still winning, but you won't get a turn to move them up. If you move them up, you won't get a turn then to attack them. So you're almost sticking most of your dice on Home Gong, Hammer of Thor, and especially Dance of Steel um, because the ability to have that plus one armor across your units is huge. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's the general strategy. People just don't let you have wrath. Um, it keeps you from using your activation pool. Um, your abilities are great, but um, you know they're not the super abilities. And then that last turn of the game, they're going to just cancel That's everything right. that you do. Um, <laughs> and then you're stuck with units that are probably out of combat and maybe stranded. Okay. So that's the general strategy that people take with them. Yeah, that's kind of kind of interesting. Um, just if I can eat in the middle board. Well, yeah, that stuff in the middle, that's, that shit's good, too. It's good, but it's not like uh, super power. It's not right? the stuff to the right of it on the board. <laughs> um Okay, that's that's interesting. You're kind of playing with like a mini board yep. um, because you won't get to unlock your stuff there. So that's interesting. Yeah. Well, um, I guess as far as lists and go, uh, just Hearthguard and Warriors. Any any preference there? Um, I like to run. Um, you know. It's been a while since I played Yams. I liked when I played them. Um, I made little suicide squads of warriors with Dane axes, um, whose whole thing was run them in as a missile, boost them up either with attack pool for very cheap, um, or mm-hmm. if I've been allowed to have some of the stuff on the right, like the ability to throw home gong on a unit of like eight warriors with Dane axes when you've got like four wrath, and all of a sudden you're throwing mm-hmm. sixteen dice that have plus one to to hit like (laughs) just well your unit's deleted now and i don't care if my unit dies because it's just sort of the point but if i murder eight or Mm -hmm. ten earth guard for it um i'll I'll take that win 
Um, so I like those little suicide squads. Um, usually run them in like four or six. Just to, um, they're cheap to boost up. Um, Something like that. Um, but Hearthguard really do benefit quite a bit from some of the abilities like um, the increasing armor especially. Um, I think, I think yep. warriors actually benefit a lot from pagan armor. Ability to cut the dice in half. So when they're cut the when they're head, going against yeah. Hearthguard, and you know they should be overwhelmed, um, you can use pagan armor, cut their dice in half to where now it's a one to one fight in terms of attack dice, and then you boost up your attack pool. Um, so like you can throw a unit of six warriors with axes against a unit of six Hearthguard, boost yourself up with a couple of attack dice, cut their dice in half. Um, you might actually be able to win that in terms of you'll certainly win in terms of points killed, but you might actually Mm-hmm. win the combat in terms of how many dudes you kill versus how Yeah, that's a really good point with the pagan armor. Basically, it downgrades Hearth yep. Guard into warriors yep. on the attack side. And yeah, when you're doing that, it's got to be got to be tough to stick the line and not just take the wrath yep. so you can cuz you're like, "Hmm, I know I could beat the shit out of those axe guys, uh, but I just can't take the wrath." Oh, interesting. Well, cool. We're going over this. I don't know. I'm pretty pumped. I want to try this. It's getting me excited, actually, to give these guys a roll. Just knowing that, that my Danax dudes can find a use in this yep. war band as well yep. is very cool. Um, yeah, fun stuff. So, um, no, well, I guess they got a mix of different tricks and stuff. Um, as far as kind of power level and stuff, what do you, or, um, well, how are you feeling about these guys? Are they a popular army? Um, or I've seen them quite a bit. Um, I know of a couple people around the shop here that play them. I've seen them at Adepticon every year. Um, I would say in terms of power level, you're looking probably mid-tier. Um, if if, okay. if somebody is really good and they really know how to get their potential out, they're probably a little higher. Um, and then against, against newbies, they're unbelievably overpowered. Just that like, newbie just crusher. Like newbie huh? to mid-tier <laughs> player is going to have no idea how to handle these guys. They're just going to get annihilated. Um, and a really, really good player can bring that out even against some better players. But when you're talking like top-level players, um, that kind of stuff, um, it really isn't that hard to get around them. And then a lot of other war bands, like these abilities are really overpowered for the dice that you're using. Um, but the ability mm-hmm. to cancel your cancel them or the, ability to, or the, the bit about having your wrath decrease as you start using them and, and lose... The effectiveness of those right side abilities um, is really kind of a drawback. Whereas some of the other war bands can still have very good abilities for their dice and don't necessarily have these drawbacks that kind of come with um, with the choice yeah. mechanic. I mean, when it really is going to work out sweet for you, you're just going to get the wrath, and there's always a delay between when you get the wrath and when you can actually really capitalize on it. So I think uh, yeah, a better player can. S- slide on in there like a little slippery yep. eel so <laughs> okay cool well that's really cool to see how different they are from the vikings i really love the you know the, the the feels of the different boards and i think this one it was really accomplished really well as far as um you know trying to give the board its own unique flavor yeah. compared to some of the the wonkier ones we might see later like if I can, it makes sense. It's kind of intuitive. Um, you know how to play with it, and you know playing against it, kind of how it's all going to shake out. So, cool. Definitely awesome. Can't wait to get some games in with these yeah, bros. Buddy. Um, we'll fucking get it done. Well, any closing comments here, Mikey G? Nope. Nope. Got nothing. No. <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> no, they're, they're fun. Successful they're fun. board review. Yep. It's a, fun, yeah. it's a fun list to play, if nothing else. It's a, The wrath mechanic makes it something interesting that you don't see in most in most cases. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah. it's a fun thing to try out, too. I mean, most people have Vikings models of some sort, right? Like, you know, you, you see either most people start mm-hmm. out with them or they're really cheap to buy. So you can use your Vikings models to play these other than the Berserkers. They all work out. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're worth trying out. Get the board, try them out, see how you, see how you like them. Badass. Cool. Thanks again, the People's yeah, Viking. Thanks, bud knowledgeable as always we'll fucking do this again this was awesome yes all right i'll check you later hoss awesome well that wraps up our yams viking battle board review super good info there from the people's viking mikey g 
Big thanks to him for doing this. I'm sure we're going to see him again on some future Battle Board reviews. But in the meantime, like and favorite this shit. Tell your friends if they like Saga. Maybe even tell them if they don't like Saga about these sweet videos you've been watching. Subscribe so you don't miss another one yourself. And become a hobby horn dog today.